it's your boy Luke back again for our Monday night football picks here on DraftKings. In this video, we're going to start off with a quick injury report to go over both sides of the game, as well as any other major headlines. And then we're going to start off with my data-based approach, head into some of the best options for each team in terms of spend-up options. We'll talk about some of the best value plays on the slate, as well as my picks for the captain slot. So without further delay, let's hop into the quick picks here for DraftKings in Monday night football. In terms of injuries, we don't have quite a lot in this game. Not a ton of injuries on either side. On the Eagles side of things, we have Boston Scott, who is going to be questionable. Not sure whether he's going to be playing or not, but in terms of their number one, we already know that's going to be Sanders. Number two is going to be Gainwell. So Scott really wasn't a big factor in fantasy to begin with. We have Mylotta and Brooks out on the O-line, which is going to hurt their chances at running the ball. Both of those are key stalwarts on that line. So seeing them out isn't a very good thing. On the defensive side of the ball, we have Brandon Graham and Rodney McLeod also going to be sitting. For the Cowboys side, a little bit less decimated by injury. We have Michael Gallup, who was out, you know, after week one. So we've known this for quite some time. And they have quite a few pieces on defense, though. Quite a few backups that are out. Quite a few guys that are starting that are questionable. And even if they play, are going to be a little bit gimpy. So the defensive side of the ball for the Cowboys, a little bit dinged up. But looking pro quite okay on the offensive side of things. The Eagles kind of have guys out here and there. A little bit more on the offensive side of things. But overall, not going to affect the over-under in this game very much or the total. Um, we have a 51.5 point over-under. We also have Dallas favored by 3.5. I think we would have expected that coming into the year. So not like injuries have changed very much. And I expect this to be a very competitive game. You know, Not only do we have two teams that are relatively high-powered offenses, also teams that don't really prioritize the defensive side of the ball. But this is a rivalry matchup, you know, interdivisional matchup between two teams that don't necessarily like each other, especially their fan bases. So I expect this to be a hard-fought game. I expect them to be prepared very much um, on edge for this type of affair, especially on Monday Night Football. And as a result, I'm looking at a high-scoring high affair rate. I have the over-under at 55.5 rather than 51.5. I also have the total pretty much at the same, at 3.5 for Dallas. So I'm going to be playing a lot of the quarterbacks on each side. I'll be playing a lot of the pass catchers as well. Not, not many of these defenses, not many of the kickers, because I think there's much higher upside elsewhere. So let's start off with the Eagles here. With the Eagles, we have Dallas Godart at $6,600. He's going to be my number three option, and I don't have him projected for anything crazy. You can see 12.9 points right there, but he's not coming in very highly owned, you know, just 21.4% owned. Again, I think a lot of that is because of his seemingly low upside, but he's somebody who we've seen catch one or two touchdowns in a game. He puts up seven or eight catches. You know, he's not going to get you a ton of yardage, but in, on DraftKings where we get a point per reception where you're getting bonuses for over 100 yards if he's able to get there, he's still capable of putting up a ceiling game. So I like pairing him up with Jalen Hurts, especially because he's a little bit cheaper than our number two option, who's Devontae to Smith at $7,200. He is projected much higher though at 16.7 points, but also comes with a massive hike in terms of ownership at 53.7%. So obviously a teammate with Jalen Hurts in college, they have a great rapport. We've already seen him catch two touchdowns. This look very polished with his route running as well. So I like going there. It's just a little bit more expensive and obviously going to make you a little bit less unique than other options. So I, he is going to be a foundational piece of my lineups, but just wanted to make that distinction there between Godart and Smith. But at number one, the slam dunk option from this team, somebody who's actually my favorite play in the entire slate, that is Jalen Hurts at $11,000. I have him projected for 21.6 points, which is actually less than what we've seen in week one and week two. And that's just because he's been so good with the running, you know, gone out there for 70 plus yards in his first two weeks. Um, he's definitely going to be owned. I have him at 64.5% owned at the flex spot, another 33% owned at the captain slot. So so essentially owned in 97, 98% of lineups, and that is completely warranted. I mean, this guy's putting up numbers just like Lamar Jackson. Um, he has just as much throwing upside, you know, perhaps not in much of a high-powered offense or anything like that, but so somebody I really like in this instance, somebody I'll be targeting a ton on this slate. Now for the Cowboys side of things, we have Ezekiel Elliott there at number three. Somebody who isn't priced really where he should be, especially for a single game slate. I mean, $8,400 for Ezekiel Elliott. If I told you that last year, you would be hammering him in in this slot. And I don't have his projection at anything crazy. I actually have him projected at less points than somebody like Devonta Smith. But at 16.6 points, there's definitely a scenario where he goes out and smashes that kind of projection. I mean, he's only being owned right now in 31.4% of lineups, which is a little bit disrespectful for somebody of Elliott's value. I mean, he's somebody who we've seen get 25 to 30 
three touches in a game before in relatively consistency, um, consistently, especially two to three years ago. So Elliott, somebody who got a ton of work there in week two against a relatively soft defense on the Eagles side of the ball. There's definitely an avenue or a set of circumstances where he ends up carrying the load for this offense. So definitely makes my top three. Um, not somebody that I want to be using in a in a game flow where I expect a high scoring game. You know, that'd be a little bit more of a shootout. They're looking for more of the pass catchers from this team, but for more of a lower scoring affair for something that's a little bit more of a route for the Cowboys side, Ezekiel Elliott is actually one of my favorite plays in those game flows. At number two, we have C.D. Lamb. He's $9,800, and I haven't projected for a ton of points in this game. Again, I expect this to be relatively close. A relative show, um, shootout as well. So I'm projected for 17.8 points and being owned where he should be at 57.5%. Sorry, 57.8%. I mean, he's somebody who's a very high upside play, has very good after the catch, also gets a ton of volume in this offense as well. So not only is he matchup proof, you know, he's going to get his licks no matter what in this offense. He's somebody you can play in the slot, you can play him outside. Um, they could take him away from the number one corner on the net other team. Uh, you can't really say that about Mark Cooper, right? A little bit more of an outside the field specialist. Um, so that's why Lamb is at number two and not somebody like Amari Cooper. But at number one, we have Dak Prescott at $11,200. I don't think I had to tell you to play Dak. I mean, has had a great start to the season, was even better there in 2020 before he got hurt. So could be due for even some positive regression, could get better as the season goes on. So at 19.8 points, I really like the projection right there. It's very solid. Not as high as somebody like Jalen Hurts because he doesn't have that rushing upside. Again, he's being much more cautious due to that ankle injury, but going to be owned in a rate about 70% of lineups. Again, that's just about right. I'm trying to fit in both these quarterbacks in essentially every lineup that I'm running out there, trying to get at least one more elite option in that lineup and round it out with some pass catchers. That's my strategy there. I love going to Dak Prescott, but definitely like Jalen Hurts with a little bit more upside in this game. Now getting into our values. At number three, we have Blake Jarwin at $3,000. I don't have him for any crazy projection tonight at 7.9 points, but not going to be relatively high owned. He's only 20.4% in my Sims right now. And Blake Jarwin, somebody who's been targeted quite a bit in week one and week two, he's had four targets in both games for right around 20, 40 yards in the second game. And somebody who could definitely go and get you a touchdown or two. I mean, we've seen it time in and time out. They love using both tight ends in the red zone. And as a result, Jarwin also Dawn Solts end up having some ceiling games, especially for these showdown formats. So I love going to them. You never really know which one of them is going to get the touchdown. But in this instance, I like going to Jarwin a little bit more because he's priced lower. He's also gotten four targets in each game. So shown some consistency with the workload. And again, at just 20% ownership, not really going to go wrong there either. At number two, we have Zach Ertz. He's even cheaper at $2,200. And I obviously love going to some of these tight ends and showdown because they end up catching a touchdown, having two or three catches. That's enough to pay off this kind of price tag. They're only in this $2,000 or $3,000 range, and you're not really looking for a ton of points. So at just a 7.8 point projection, you know, he's not going to pop off the board or anything like that, but relatively overlooked at 13.8%. And somebody that Jalen Hurts has really looked to as a safety blanket. You know, his number one tight end is Dallas Godart. Obviously, obviously one of our spend up options for that team, but they put out two tight end sets all the time. You know, this is a run first offense, especially even led by Jalen Hurts in the red zone. And Zach Hurts, as a result, gets plenty of snaps. He saw 34% in week one, only saw 20% in week two. But again, he went down, was injured, um, actually ended up getting COVID this week as well. So we weren't even sure if he was going to end up suiting up for this game, but was taken off the COVID list. Has no injury designation for this week. So should be good to go. That's actually why we see him priced so low at $2,200. So he ended up getting a lot of inherent value with that price tag. And it seems like not many people are willing to go there. Again, he hasn't had a great start to the year just because he is the number two behind Goder at this point, you know, getting a little bit older has lost a step to the younger guy, but still a very sure-handed target and definitely has some touchdown upside in this game. At number one, we have Cedric Wilson at 4200 bucks, and I haven't projected for just 11 points exactly. A lot higher ownership at 36.7%, but he's the clear number three receiver for this Cowboys offense and is going to get a ton of snaps in playing time. I mean, just last week, it was his first week out there as the starter. He saw 70% of snaps. You know, they went to two tight ends. That's a little bit more than usual. Michael Gallup saw 96% of snaps there in week one before he got injured. So definitely using the two tight ends at a little bit more. It's actually why I like somebody like Blake Jarwin a little bit more this week, right? But Cedric Wilson, very explosive, very good after the catch. Actually reminds me a little bit of CeeDee Lamb, right? Obviously not as quick, not as fast, but 
approaching those kind of numbers pretty much anywhere you look across the board. So somebody who can take a short gain, turn it into an 80-yard touchdown, and a showdown, I absolutely love that. I expected him to be somewhere around 50, maybe even 60% owned, but because of his price tag, you know, he's not priced around the $3,000, $2,000 range. People aren't willing to go there as much. So he'll be my favorite value play in the entire slate. Again, somebody who's going to get plenty of snaps. I'm expecting around a 75% um, share in terms of his snaps. In terms of his target share, have him at around an 18% target share. So nothing crazy. A clear number three option on that team though. In terms of our captains, I have three captains that really stick out. Number three, we have Ezekiel Elliott at $12,600. I told you guys before, there's definitely an instance where he goes out there and just controls this offense. There in week two, they kind of tried to do it. They didn't throw the ball very much with Dak Prescott. They really tried to lean on Ezekiel Elliott. And to be honest with you, against the Chargers, it did not work, right? That Chargers defense, that front seven really stepped it up. That's why we saw them lose that game. That's why we saw such a low scoring affair with two of the highest volume offenses in the NFL. And again, I don't expect them to come out and try to run it down these guys' throats, but this is a very good price on somebody like Elliott. So if you get him in there at $12,600, you have no problem fitting in Jalen Hurts, maybe even Devonta Smith, and still getting one stud option from that Cowboys team. So it makes your lineup just a little bit more balanced than some of these other captains you'll see on this list. Again, projected for 24.9 points, just 12.9% ownership at the captain slot. So I don't expect many people to be rostering him. You you know, I expect a lot more people to go to somebody like Jalen Hurts, maybe even Dak Prescott or C.D. Lamb. But I really like the upside right there. Again, it's a little bit game script dependent. You know, we need something to happen, right? We need this to either be a blowout or a game where Elliott scores two to three touchdowns. But both of those are definitely possible. And that's why he makes my captain list. Number two, we have C.D. Lamb at $14,700. I've projected a little bit higher than somebody like Elliott with quite a bit of a quite a bit of a price hike so you definitely have a little bit of opportunity cost right there but at 26.7 points at just 14.5 percent ownership lamb has one of the highest if not the highest ceilings on this entire board somebody who can take again a five yard gain somebody just like cedric wilson who has that after the catch ability on steroids right again i said cedric wilson kind of approaching that kind of level of receiver but The main guy is C.D. Lamb. You know, he's going to be out there for every snap this game. Somebody who's definitely going to get 8 to 10 targets. Essentially does week in and week out. So definitely like him there at number 2. Probably don't have to convince you too much of that. At number 1, though, we do have Jalen Hurts, who's by far my favorite captain slot. Captain play for the captain slot on this play. We have him at $16,500. I am projected for 32.4 points and 33.4% ownership. And just somebody you essentially have to play a captain. You know, just like Lamar Jackson. More often, more often than not, this guy's going to go out there and end up in the optimal play. Just has a ton of rushing upside. We've seen 70-plus rushing yards in the first two games. We've also seen plenty of passing upside as well. I mean, he opens up so many holes for himself because he presents that rushing threat. So somebody who's in a high-volume offense, this is a relatively high total game. Again, 51.5 points. I don't think you have to overthink it. This guy's going to go out there, get you at least 20 fantasy points, if not closer to 30 even 35 fantasy points he has that kind of upside that's all i've got for the monday night football picks guys go ahead and let me know in the comments who you have as the highest score on the slate for DraftKings. would love to get some debate down there and go ahead and let me know in the comments section as always guys i really enjoy your support here on the channel if you guys haven't already gone ahead and liked and subscribed go ahead and make sure and do so if you guys enjoy data-based fantasy content like this make sure to check out my channel for even more content I have content on the NFL coming out in terms of the full week four slate coming out this week. We also have showdown slates coming out later on, as well as golf content for any golf guys and MMA content for the UFC card. So lots out there for all of you guys. So make sure to subscribe to make sure you get all of that content. But thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you guys. And again, good luck with any of your lineups that you put in for tonight.